How's it going, everyone? Again, this is Jose Trujillo. I'm a fine art artist coming to you from my art studio. And today we're going to be painting some of uh, those infamous water lilies. This is an 8 by 10 inches canvas panel. Super durable. I like them. And I will be doing this painting with a palette knife. Um, so let's get started here. Nothing fancy. Just uh I guess it is fancy. <laughs> Let's see. Just a second. Something like that. Painting water is a it's an interesting thing, but you know I don't I don't get caught up on on, on the thing. Um, what I've learned how to do as 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 I'm painting is that um, I I very much do what what. Uh, and this is how I approach most of my paintings. How I, I, I read one time that Claude Monet said that he painted uh, what he saw, sort of uh, patches of paint. You know, he said that he was creating sort of patches. Like he would see, you know, oh, okay, there's yellow. You know, I'm, not, I'm not really, uh, unless I'm doing figures or portraits, I'm concerned a little bit more with figure. Uh, with what the figure looks like, but I'm really most of the time I'm not, especially in landscapes. Again, unless they're like cityscapes or something, then then a bit more a different approach gets put into that. But when it comes to landscapes or, or nature, um, I sort of this, develop this. This uh, um, just uh, apply approach, you know. Get the color, apply. Where's the color? Right there. Okay, apply it. You know, without really overthinking it too much, or many occasions at all. You know, just not, don't overthink it. Just apply it. Where's the color? Right there. Okay. It's right there. Then, then put it there. Don't uh, don't sweat it. Don't get back to it, don't revise it, don't, just don't. It's better for you to start a new painting or finish it without revising, without making corrections. See, it's my belief that if you're making corrections on a piece of uh, artwork or painting, uh, this is what I've, I've, over the years, this is what I've come to believe, right, because it became sort of a, an understanding to me. If you're making corrections, constantly making corrections when you're painting, I believe you're not really painting. And I don't want to offend any, any realist painters out there because you guys you guys paint phenomenal. The, I'm not, not offending. I'm not offending the pros, I'm offending the amateurs, I guess. <laughs> if you're constantly making corrections, I believe you're not painting. I think what you're doing is that you're trying to uh, you're, 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 you're having a fight, an internal fight. And the reason I'm saying this is because this happened to me, so that might, this might not be everyone, of course. But based on my personal observations of how I behaved when I was doing this, it's that I was having a, a, a sort of an internal fight to, between 
what I was looking at, you know, the, 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 the subject, or the object, or whatever, what I was looking at, I guess that would be the subject. <laughs> and um, between what I was looking at and what uh, I was painting, right? Or even in your mind, what it's sometimes you're looking at something and and in your mind you're like, well, yeah, but it's not supposed to look that way. It's supposed to look, you know, this way. If you're doing stuff like that. I think that you stop painting now. I think now what you're doing is that you're trying to uh, arrive at a place where where you're trying to meet the expectations of your mind. And to me, uh, personally, I no longer think you're painting at that point. At that point, you're you're trying to satisfy the expectations of your mind. And that, that's nice. I mean, it, it, sometimes the paintings end up looking very nice. It, it, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't quite believe that just because something looks nice, it's a good work of art. You know, I, if you're chasing a mental expectation, I think you are a very good artisan. I'm sorry if I offend someone, okay? But I do. This is regardless of what you, your skill level. I don't. I, it has nothing to do with that. I think if you're, if you're, you know how people say, "Oh, I was so unsatisfied with it." Um, why, why, why were you unsatisfied with it? Was it your skill level? Was it what was it? You know, people say, "Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, it's because it didn't come out the way I wanted to." Or oh, you wanted to come out a certain way, and you know you ask you, you as an artist I ask myself this often: Why did I want it to come up a certain way? Now I, don't confuse this with with uh, um, the need to 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 uh, to better your approach. Okay, and that's not what I'm. When you're when you're starting out or when you're developing an approach or whatever, it, it's different than when you have this expectation of what the painting or the sculpture or whatever is supposed to look. I believe that when when you are creating a mental projection of what it's supposed to look like, at that point you have stopped painting. And and I don't have any data to back this up. <laughs> I just think that, that that's what happens. I don't know. I have an intuition for it. It's happened to me before. I don't think that at that point you are, you're gone. You're long gone. <laughs> no one can help you. No one can help you. <laughs> I, I, I remember reading a... Uh, uh, a quote by the great Rumi. Uh, and it said, if, uh, let me remember it, if you teach the child to say bird, the word bird, bird right? Like the flying bird. Uh, the child um, no longer, will no longer see the bird. Of course, it's an exaggeration, right? Of course, you have to teach the child language. But I believe he was talking about that. The, mo the moment it becomes conceptual, the moment your mind leaves the, the your, your, you are no longer perceiving, just perceiving, now you're conceptualizing, you are no longer in tune with just perceiving. And I believe, personally, right, um, I believe that, that creating artwork is, uh, is purely uh, observation. It's not, uh, you know how we have conceptual art and we have all these arts? 
uh, that's fine and dandy. I'm not, I'm not very fond of that because I, I believe that artwork is, 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 uh, I'm not saying that the artwork is, it doesn't look great. The artwork can look great, just like a piece of furniture can look great. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that, is that the artwork is not, uh, if, if it doesn't come from that place of, of observation, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's start out, it doesn't come from, a, from, the, from, the, from the main source. Anyways, <laughs> this is my own mambo jumbo. Okay. Anyways, you guys are, you guys are in, my, in my video, so I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why uh, I think it was Hassan who used to refer to Monet as the as the eye. I think it was Hassan. I'm not sure. I want to say it was it was Hassan. Maybe it was someone else. If you guys know it was someone else, please uh, write it down. But he referred to Monet as as the eye, right? He said Monet is just an eye, right? Meaning that Monet is an observant, right? It's just an eye. And then he, and then the quote ended by saying, "But what an eye!" I mean, that, that, that I think that's one of the reasons why we love Monet so much, or or Van Gogh, because the paintings were not necessarily they were not conceptual; they were they were observation. I mean, just look at a one of the chairs by Van Gogh. You can you can automatically sense. You don't have to think about it. You can sense that. The man stared at that chair for long periods of time. Stared at the landscape for long periods of time. Didn't quote unquote study it in the sense of how we, you know, think studying something like a scientist. But he was he was sort of, you know he was he would the, I believe the greatest artists are the greatest. Of observing, they can observe, they can look at something for long periods of time, and and, and let it sink in. Let, they can soak. They can soak the subject. And without adding, that's why that's why Picasso. I know I'm giving you guys a lecture now on something else, <laughs> but that's why Picasso said, "If I could only remove my mind." Come on, people, that's what he was talking about. <laughs> he was talking about the capacity. To paint without mental uh, uh, without the mind in mental interruption if I could just paint without my head he said you know because he's talking about that the, there's a capacity to paint without them it's what I refer to as a zone in other in other videos anyways I'll leave you guys with that those are my my water lilies I hope you guys enjoy them hope you guys can see that they're water lilies <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Till next time.